Today, we're going to be using a SQL injection to hack into a website. And here is our target, Altoro Mutual, online banking. Which, to preface, if you cannot tell by the login page, this is not a real banking website. Now, disclaimer, I do not condone any illegal activity. All this is done for educational purposes only. But hackers can use login forms like this one to dump entire databases, passwords, emails, personal identifiable information, PII, payment data, and they can all just sell it on the dark web. So when you log in to a login page, what is really happening behind the scenes? Now to put it extremely simply, you have your user input goes to the back end in the web app. The user input gets inputted into a SQL query, sends that to the database, true, false, accept, deny, things like that. So this is an example SQL query, select from users where username equals admin and password equals, let's say for example, this password is Hunter2. So if username equals admin and the password you inputted into the login field is Hunter2, you get access. That means it's true and you're in. And if the input you input is false, it is denied, AKA you do not get access and you cannot log in. So this is where SQL injection comes in. Injecting SQL and manipulating the queries to equal true, AKA to grant you access into whatever you're trying to log into. So we have this diagram, AI made it, I didn't make it. So shout out to AI, but we have the user input submits the SQL query to the web application processes input, the SQL query executes the query in the database and returns the results. That would be the expected outcome, but for the malicious input, you can inject malicious SQL and then it alters the SQL logic to the altered SQL query, sends that to the database and returns your results. So if we're here, we can try username admin and password password. Enter login failed. We're sorry, but this username or password was not found in our system. Please try again. So that looked like this in the back end. Username admin password, password, it was not true. So we were denied. So one thing that will get you into a login page via SQL injection is the handy dandy tried and true one equals one. One equals one is always true. So we have this one equals one in parentheses. So for the username, we can input admin if it's true. Password, one equals one. And then we have a syntax error encountered one at line one, column 67, which this does prove it is SQL injectable, but the username is not admin. So what can we do? Parentheses or one equals one and putting it in both login fields. And we're in, as the hackers say. So how did that work? We didn't know the username or the password. We just inputted one equals one or one equals one in both fields, which equals both fields to be true, AKA the login is successful. Another SQL injection you can do is dash dash. So this dash is a form of a comment. As you know, in coding, the pound symbol equals a comment, which means the code ignores it, doesn't run it, it's just a comment. So that in SQL is dash dash. So up here, select from users where username equals admin dash dash and password equals password. So the comment tells SQL, ignore the rest of this line. So it only checks the username and it lets us in. So it ignores the password. So 
We input admin, comment, password, type in whatever, login, hello admin user, and we are in again. Now, SQL injection has been around for a very long time, and it is actually top three in OWASP most critical vulnerabilities. As you can see here, literally in 2017, injection maps to 2021 injection. So it's pretty common. Now, of course, what I showed you is very simple and SQL injections are a lot more complicated than what I just showed you, but it kind of gives you an idea of how input is processed in a web app and what can go wrong if input is not validated. So from this diagram, you have the user input, submit SQL query to the web application. And then this whole thing is vulnerable to SQL injection if there is a lack of input validation failure, which can lead to data exfiltration, data manipulation, unauthorized access, things of that nature, which is not very good for you or your company's data or anything of that nature. Now, there are tools to automate SQL injection. This is just extremely basic. It doesn't involve external tools such as Burp Suite or SQL Map. It just involves a mouse and a keyboard. Link to the demo website is in the description if you want to try it yourself. Again, this demonstration was ethical. Everything is ethical and for educational purposes only. So make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.